Okay. <laughs> ah, peace be to you all. Assalamu alaikum. This is Omar Abdul Malik, physician assistant and health educator. Some of you all may know me as Dr. O, the health ed pro. All right, so I am here. I just finished a, a Father's Day run with my son. We're jogging back to the car. Uh, we did 16, 16 miles. So we're just doing a cool down now. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about the concept of uh, fatherhood, what it means to me. Um, you know, fatherhood, it's, it's the Father's Day is not really part of our religious beliefs, but it's celebrated here in the U.S. Oof. So, fatherhood means to me that you are nurturing someone or something, and uh, you're not always going to get it right. It's, it's a huge risk. You know, you do the best, you do the best you can. Um, you got to make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yeah, there's the times I've punished my children when they didn't deserve it. There's the times I've let them get away with stuff when they deserve punishment. <laughs> but you know, my wife and I have been working together. We've been married for uh, 25 years, thank God. So we try to figure out how best to raise our children. We've got four. Um, they're uh, 20, 18, 16, and 12. So, you know, as we send the older ones out into this <laughs> tumultuous world, we can only hope, <laughs> yeah, we send them out as young adults, we only hope that we've done, you know, at least a halfway decent job with them. But you never really know. You know, there's no perfect manual for, uh, for child rearing. You know, Certainly not for fatherhood, because we <laughs> we men can mess up a whole lot <laughs> just because of how we how we can tend to be as men. Lord have mercy. Um. So I I want to talk about fatherhood also as it relates to this country, because you're here in the United States of America. We have the concepts of the Founding Fathers. And the Founding Fathers, you know, a lot of these guys were slaveholders. Yeah, they had racist attitudes. And of course now, you know, not now, but racism, um, as a, especially as it relates to black folks, has been a, a very uh, controversial topic. Um, especially now, right, this is where we are. Uh, with, with all this going on, with all the news. But we're trying to work on ways to deal with it. And it's going to take time. You know, we can't, you know, we try to rush things. You know, when you're young, you know, a year or even five years is, is a long time. But I can tell you, somebody who's in his 50s now, you know, sometimes you got to wait generations. It's like, you know, we want change now. That might not come now. Hey, how you doing? You know, my grandfather, before he died, he came to my sibling and I as a uh, sibling and eyes. <laughs> um, he came to our graduation and um, our high school graduation. This was like 30 years ago. And he was crying. <laughs> my dad said, oh my God, he, was, he embarrassed me so much. But he was crying because, you know, my parents worked hard for us to go to these really good private schools. And um, we, um, we all did very well. And the reason my grandfather was crying is because there was a time where he couldn't go to school. He was, um, he was born, we think, either 1918 or 1920. <laughs> he died in his, his, um, his uh, 90s. So he saw, he saw some serious, serious racism. He saw, you know, public lynchings where there, was no, there wasn't any, there's nothing you could really do about it. What are you gonna do in it's uh, 1925? You know, and, the, and the, the police are some of the folks that are doing the lynchings. I mean, this is back in, you know, the types of things we saw with, with uh, 
Emmett Till and, and um, you know, there's a book called Without Sanctuary um, that, that um, it was a photographic uh, uh, collection of, of just the lynchings of black folks in this country. Um, and he was crying because he was like, wow, man, we've, we've really, my children's children have done it. You know, they, they've, they've accomplished things that I, I couldn't. Um, just because of, of uh, where this country was, or white folks, the white folks that were in charge, actually, where they were just mentally and psychologically when he was a kid. But it's getting better. It's going to take time. We've got to be patient with ourselves and patient with each other. Uh, it doesn't sound, it's not a cool thing to say. I mean, I might get called an Uncle Tom or something. It's happened before. But, you know, I have to see potential in people. And as a clinician and educator, I have to see potential in the sick person to become a healthy person. I have to see the potential in somebody who is unlearned to be somebody who becomes learned in, in whatever it is I'm teaching them. If I just quit and I say, ah, I give up, they're not, they're not learning anything. Or they, they're not getting better, you know, as fast as I want them to get better. I wouldn't be a very good clinician or educator. So I, I see things a little bit differently. I got, um, I got a lot of high hopes for my, my children. Um, I got a lot of high hopes for uh, those of you all that are much younger than me, you millennials and Generation Zers. I, I think we're gonna be okay. I think um, God willing with uh, patience, diligence and, and, and intelligent action, we're gonna keep this uh, COVID-19 thing. There'll be something else. <laughs> Um, we're going to get through this opioid epidemic. There'll be something else. We're going to get through this, um, this uh, racial, this really toxic racial dynamic that we have. There'll be some other challenge for us. This is the, the nature of, of things, uh, just as we are as humans. But um, that's, uh, that's part of, um, of uh, being who we are and, and part of me being a dad. If I, if I gave up on my, my children when they were these weak-minded and feeble-bodied little babies, they wouldn't be uh, the people that they are today. You know? And you know, my son, 16, uh, just finished the 16-mile run with me. He used to hate running. <laughs> he used to cry and whine. But um, you know, now, he can, now he can do it because I had to have patience. It took a long time. Uh, so it's like running, you know, you can't start off running a marathon. You got to work your way up to it. You got to be patient with it. But that's all for now. Uh, for those of you guys that would, as always, if you uh, have an interest in becoming a physician assistant or health educator, or just uh, living a pos positive lifestyle and exchanging ideas, I welcome you to subscribe to my channel. If you feel like it, if you're not, that's cool too. And, um, you can check me out on Instagram. Um, I've got a, um, um, some things I'm working on for those of you guys that want to become PAs. I have to charge you because I put time and effort. But it's like anything. you got to work toward it slowly. Work toward the development of it. Toward the final product. Anyway, I wish you guys peace and success in your positive endeavors. Take care.